Thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Um, I'll just warn the children now, there's only going to be 10 minutes, so don't worry. It's not going to be yeah. half an hour. Um, but what we're going to do is look at three of Kerry's pictures uh, and three sort of associated questions, which will just help you to understand the work uh, maybe a little bit more, because quite often with uh, an artist's work, there are things that you notice immediately, and then there are other things that take a little bit longer to know and notice. And it, be, it can be interesting to know about how they do it and a bit about the process. And it can not, but with Kerry, it's quite interesting. Um, <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so the first, uh, the first painting we're going to look at is this one. And it's because uh, one, of the, um, one of the aspects to Kerry's painting is that she has these two quite distinct styles of painting. So we now go through life going, look, they're Kerry clouds. Um, and the clouds in Kerry's paintings are absolutely extraordinary. And there are a number of different examples of that in the room, but they have a slightly photorealist um, uh, characteristic which is lots and lots of layers, she'll tell you about this, and I don't need to, and she'll tell you about scrubbing away and how that does and doesn't work. But, but that is one type of approach, very slow, very painstaking, very thorough. And then there's this other element, which is washes, and it's all chance and experimentation, and she can't control it. And to have an artist that is prepared to combine those two elements of hyper-real control, and very slow and very careful, and then take a complete risk, and do something totally experimental is really, I, I cannot think of another. I think it's a very, very um, unusual and interesting uh, combination of aspects. So my question to Kerry, therefore, was, how do these two distinct disciplines make you feel about each other or something like that? <laughs> okay, so I think, I think I've always enjoyed contrast in the work and I, I'm a I'm a painter's painter. I love paint. I love changing it. I love what it can do. I love manipulating it and um, seeing how much I can push and pull. So I've always enjoyed that. And I think the more freer expressionistic, quite rough physical came before the photorealist. And I so this contrast is what I enjoy and that's what I enjoy in the landscape too, that contrast of different paces, different surfaces. So introducing the more slower photorealist is several things, I think. One was it's a, it's a hook for the viewer. So it's a hook that immediately creates space in a painting and you, and you feel comfortable, I know that, I feel comfortable, but, but then I want to take you somewhere else slightly odd. So I want to hook you in with that. The other is the contrast. So I, want, I love it when I see people going, what, how, what, how does she even love that? I love that. And um, so that's the other thing. And then also the, the thing is, my pace of working in the studio, uh, you know, I, I used to paint kneeling on the floor and I used to sort of, you know, a physical, a big wax and things, and I still do a bit of that, but now I quite enjoy sitting down <laughs> with that and painting clouds for a day. And I think that's, Maybe that's a getting old thing, but maybe it just, I enjoy that meditative change in the studio days. And I have big splashy days, I have cooling day, days, I have sanding days, and then I have cloud days. And, then, and I enjoy that, that having the option of those many different things to do. And I think it all fits me enjoying that way of working, contrast in the paintings, what I see in the landscape, and then your experience, what I want to give you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a, um, so, yeah, one of my favourites, Shaft of Light, Amazing Clouds. Um, so uh, the next one, I think we're going to do the blue wall um, and talk about a different aspect. Um, watch the step. And, yeah, watch the step. So this is less easy for all of you to see at once, um, but it is really to get to ask Kerry about, so Kerry was telling me that with this painting, it's a view, it's the end of her road, and she sees it all the time, she's painted it many, many, many times, and it becomes more and more simplified every time, and something that um, one doesn't necessarily think about, but apparently all artists say, the hardest thing to achieve in painting is simplicity. So to get to strip something right back to almost its 
most minimal form is a really difficult thing to achieve and for it to still be successful. And so I said to Kerry, do you agree? Um, <laughs> yes, thank you. So um, this was sometimes the most simple paintings that I do are have been the most torturous. And uh, that to me is the only way that I can get there. And I think of it like um, a good editor. I'm not literary, but you know, you, you have, you know, you're taking away big chunks and what you're left with is that perfect thing. But you could only get that perfect paragraph through having those reams of pages beforehand. So this painting has been through thousands of versions. There's versions on the back. It's, it's been flipped, it's been bleached, it's been stripped, it's been sanded to get down to that essence. And, and I think maybe that is because it is the top of the road. The boys might correct me and go, it's, it's been flipped the other way. But I think when you see something so often, it, it's reduced to that very minimal, you've seen it in all seasons, all weathers. So uh, that's got there. And it's probably the, the most worked on painting, I think, of all of them. But because it's got to that point of being very simple, it's sort of being reduced from lots and lots of decisions to actually stop. And just leave it like so what you've sort of described there is that actually to make a successful simplified painting, there is more than anyone can know oh, yeah. going on for, to make it a finished. For, for me, I know there are painters out there that can do very minimal expressive and that works beautifully. And, and sometimes those minimal expressive paintings sometimes come after a week of being in the studio and, and then it's that last thing that you use your palette up. We've all, the painters amongst us know about that, that last thing that you do. But for me, it's, I want the foundation of that toil and those many different versions that the, the sort of, the, the thinnest, simplest building has the more complicated foundations. Is that a good analogy? Yeah, the kind of, so I've been through those, when you look at something quite simple in here, rest assured they're the ones that I've, you know, slammed doors about at home or, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> husband, uh, but they've been through, but then they, they're standing on solid ground for that reason. Yeah, so, um, so the last piece we're gonna look and it's gonna to connect to that conversation is this one here, the blue, white and black piece on this one. Um, so you've already talked about, um, you talked in that piece about the history, the history behind a lot of his paintings on the back of the paintings, there might be another painting and they come through and they bleach and you see the history. And in this one, you don't see it when you first look at it, but there's a history of some trees here and there's, you know, maybe a horizon and there's something and there's, and, and you've incorporated, and this, this happens in probably a third of the pieces where it's really visible and others where it's less visible but you're incorporating the history and you talk about how for you that connects to the history of the land and the scarring of the land and, and that's a conscious... Yeah, so the, so the, the, the um, I'm not Cornish, but I was attracted to Cornwall because of that physicality of a land being scarred at the edge of a peninsula, that it's washed away and it's, it's kind of worn away and then new growth and then worn away and new growth, worn away and new growth. And that leaves textures that the light does different things to. So I kind of, when I got to Cornwall, I felt like I'd come home because of that's the way I was working. I was washing on and I was washing off. And so I kind of felt that connection. So the history of working old paintings and reworking and turning around, there's never a complete plan I probably don't, I can say that. So there's never a complete plan, but I kind of know what I'm doing. I know the room that I'm in, I know the things I'm doing, but I, I need the painting to contribute to the process. And those older paintings with previous lives have more to say. So the paintings that are the least contrived and the most inventive are, are the ones that have gone, hi, I'm a mark here, or you've left this stain here. And then I can come in with my things that I want to do and go, oh, thank you for that. I'll add that and I'll add this. So this, this again, this painting is, you know, this has had lots of different lies and versions that I wasn't happy with. But then there were these, you know, exciting shapes that were left over from something else. And then this was probably a, you know, a, maybe upside down. And so it was giving me clues. And I just have to sort of hand over some of the answers to the painting. And then I can control and take it where I want to. Yeah. Thank you. Um, 
So the last thing I was going to say to you is that I had a conversation in the gallery with a collector on Wednesday who said, we're talking about Kim Yule, the Korean artist who mastered the raindrop, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, drop, the yeah. water drop lit. And, we, and he was saying, you know, is Kerry a kind of modern day master of clouds? And when you look at that one actually has the most incredible cloudscape in it. Um, and so they're different, you know, we have different, we have macro skies, we have cumulus nimbus, we have all sorts of these skies going on. Have they always been in your, because I know you were abstract, but have they always been an element of your landscapes like this? Um, no, it is a fairly recent, sort of five years, gosh, with the whole pandemic, we've got a time warp of years to miss to add on. I'd say about five years, maybe more. Um, and it's lovely that he says, because I think I'm at the start of this cloud journey. So, the, and I quite like that. I quite like the, the time, and I was talking to Sonia, I think, about the, the time and the, the, the skill to do that. I'm enjoying that journey, that thoroughness, you know, I'm enjoying that. So, They'll still, they'll, yeah, they're very much here to stay. And I think I'm at the beginning of, but it is then, now I have an inbox full of friends who you've included going, oh, I'll send you this, this is your cloud. This is, so I've got all of these clouds coming from all over the world that sometimes a little bit too much. But no, they're there to stay for the, for the reasons of why I enjoy doing them and what I was saying about the painting. I want to give you, you know, I want to give the viewer that hook and that space. And then I want to take you somewhere slightly off but I want to give you that safety of those clouds to begin with. So what you've just told me is that you have made other people in your life look and notice. Yes. And, and if that is a, an achievement of, as an, of an artist, then what a great achievement. Yeah. And if you are making friends of yours, look at, this, look at nature and look at the world and think of you and think, oh, Kerry, clouds. <laughs> and they're noticing things. And there's something about that. There are artists that make you yeah. look at the world and you think, uh, Tom Hammock Sky, or there are, and I think that's a, a really no, nice note to sort of, to end on and to say that I think you have made me look at the world in a certain way. And, and I think probably many others. Um, and so, congratulations. That's really thank lovely. You thank you. No, that's thank really you. nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from that? I'm happy to.